In 1898, Swedish economist Nut Wicksell contended that there was a natural interest rate that balanced the demand and supply of credit in a market equilibrium, ensuring appropriate saving and investment levels. Under this paradigm, sustaining market interest rates below the natural rate for an extended period of time drives excessive borrowing that promotes less productive and more speculative investment. This, unfortunately, has been the precise scenario that has unfolded in the Great Recession's aftermath, when interest rates have been substantially decreased in many advanced economies under the presumption that low rates spur economic recovery. The following graph demonstrates how in 1980, long-term interest rates stood at 11.4% in the United States and 8.5% in Germany, while by 2016, these rates were decreased to just about 1.9% in the U.S. and 0.3% in Germany. Essentially, policymakers have created a Wixellian dilemma where investment spurred by low interest rates is driving economic growth, but these inefficient investments support growth at the expense of lower productivity in the economy. In this zero-sum quagmire, policymakers have largely disregarded a key particularity, that persistently low rates have a potential of eroding bank profitability metrics through lowering net interest margins, or NIMS, which are ratios of net interest income to invested assets. Consequently, lower NIMS inexorably decrease the ability of financial institutions to attract capital, which curbs productive investment in capital stock and expands vulnerabilities to economic shocks and reductions in market confidence. A Bank for International Settlements cross-country empirical analysis of 108 international banks from advanced economies has documented a non-linear relationship between interest rate levels and bank NIMS since 2008. The study confirmed that the impact of interest rates on NIMS is strongest and hence the most economically dangerous at lower levels. This graph depicts an instance of the same exact trend, a time-lagged negative impact of interest rates on average American bank net interest margins in the post-2008 period. Therefore, continued sustenance of market rates below the natural rate by central banks has certainly paved the way for the next crisis's roadmap. To test the robustness of these results, I conducted my own time series regression analysis of the impact of interest rates on net interest margins. As such, I ran a regression estimating the impact of the federal funds rate on average NIMS of all U.S. banks from 1984 till 2016, with unit of analysis being quarterly percentages. To maximize the robustness of results, I incorporated control variables, including GDP growth and total liabilities for all commercial banks' percentage change in the U.S., as well as adding robust standard errors and clustered the data by percentage levels. Regression results show the positive impact of an increase in federal funds rate on average bank NIMS at 1% confidence level, demonstrating how strong the results are. As such, a 1% decrease in federal funds rate is expected to lead to a 0.06% decrease in average bank net interest margins in the United States. Let's examine a case study. Deutsche Bank. With shares down nearly 45% on year-to-date basis and reaching lowest levels in 24 years, the International Monetary Fund in June referred to Deutsche Bank as the riskiest financial institution in the world. The IMF cited the bank as one of the worst performers in terms of ability of banks to withstand unexpected shocks to the system. What's the reason for this? Well, the reason lies in a stark decrease in Deutsche Bank's profitability, with pre-tax profit down 67% in the second quarter of this year. The bank's management has pointed to one key factor suppressing bank's profitability growth, ultra-low interest rates that have put pressure on bank shares across the world. In conclusion, the research demonstrated in this presentation, including previous studies, my regression analysis, and a case study, point to a key finding. Persistently low interest rates drive productivity declines, which then result in decreases in long-term growth rates. Eventually, inflationary pressures will build up, forcing market interest rates to rise. The longer the market rates remain below the natural rate, the greater the purge will be once higher rates induce a recession, causing a sharp rise in defaults among malinvestments made during the period of cheap credit. Thus, Grounds have unfortunately been established for the next financial crisis, one that has been driven by central banks and is rooted in their low interest rate policies. Our hopes lie on the political will of policymakers to reverse such policies, and as has been the case in the science of economics, every dilemma has a solution, and the Wuxellian dilemma is not an exception.
Thank you very much for your attention.